Do you ever have those days when you really wanna bake a loaf of sourdough bread, but you can't because you forgot to prepare your starter the night before? Well, today I'm gonna to show you a recipe that can be made from start to finish in just about nine hours, so you can make the entire thing within the course of a single day. So, let's get into it. If you're new here, my name is Charlie, and on this channel, I explore the basic principles of cooking so that we can all become better home cooks and home bakers. So, let's make some bread. And speaking of that, I'm excited to announce that I just launched my first line of merch, which includes this Let's Make Some Bread t-shirt that I'm wearing right now. So you can find my full shop at theregularchef.com slash merch, and it'll also of course be linked below. There's several designs to choose from, and they come in a wide variety of styles and colors, so make sure to check that out if that sounds like something that interests you, or if you just appreciate what I do here and you want to support me further. And if you order within the next two weeks, your order will ship out in the first batch, so make sure to order soon if you want to get them as quick quickly as possible. So without further ado, let's get into the recipe. Now this is based on my basic sourdough bread recipe and the process is pretty similar, but I've made a few modifications which will not only allow us to make this entire bread within the same day, but it'll also help us to create an even better, more open crumbed bread. And as always, we first need to prepare our levain. And since this is a same day sourdough bread, we're going to prepare it in the morning on the same day that we want to bake the bread. And we'll have to make sure that it rises quickly, so the first key in doing that is to use a high ratio of starter to flour to water. So in this case, we're using a 1 to 1 to 1 ratio. So add 50 grams of your starter to a clean jar, along with 50 grams of flour and 50 grams of water. And as usual, I'm using a blend of 50% whole wheat and 50% all-purpose flour here, but really pretty much any type of flour will work. Then of course stir until all of the flour is fully hydrated and cover your jar with a loosely fitting lid. I recently started using these Weck tulip jars when I'm working with smaller quantities of starter because their shape makes them really easy to stir in, but since they only have a half liter capacity, they do only work for smaller quantities. So I'll of course link those below for anyone else who wants to check them out. Now the other key to helping the starter rise quickly is placing it into a warm environment around 85 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 29 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to put it in my homemade proofing box, which I've made a video about that'll also be linked below, but you can usually achieve a similar environment by just placing your starter into your oven with the light on. So after one and a half hours, my levain has risen to just about double its original size and it's got plenty of bubbles throughout, so I'm ready to start mixing the dough. In a large bowl, add 140 grams of levain, which should be about the entire thing, along with 510 grams of water, preferably around 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Then just stir to dissolve the levain. Now add 70 grams of whole wheat flour along with 600 grams of unbleached bread flour and stir until all of the flour is completely saturated. So I like to start with a dough whisk, then finish it off with my hands. This recipe will make two loaves, but of course feel free to scale it to make however many you like. Now just cover that bowl with plastic wrap or anything else that will form an airtight seal, and throw it back into your 85 degree environment for a 25 minute resting period. For simplicity in this recipe, I've designed every resting period from here up until the final proofing to be 25 minutes long. So after that first 25 minutes, we'll add the remaining ingredients, which are 14 grams of salt and another 30 grams of water. So fold those ingredients into the dough, then if you like, transfer the dough to a translucent rectangular container or any other container with a lid. Now this brings the total hydration of the dough to almost 83%, so it's a bit higher than the 77% that we used in my basic sourdough bread recipe. So this will make the dough more extensible, which will allow us to achieve an even more open crumb, but it'll also make the dough slightly stickier and harder to handle, so I'd recommend starting with that basic recipe if you're new to making sourdough bread. Anyways, once those ingredients are fully integrated, place that container back into your warm environment for another 25 minutes. Now for this recipe, we're going to perform a total of 5 sets of folds throughout the bulk fermentation. So we'll be doing 3 sets of stretch and folds, followed by 2 sets of coil folds. So after that first 25 minute rest, get your dough back out and perform the first set of stretch and folds. For these, just grab a small portion of your dough and stretch it up as far as it'll go, then fold it back over itself, and repeat that process a total of 8 times around the perimeter of the dough. Then once that's done, place your dough back into the warm environment for another 25 minutes. Then perform the remaining two sets of stretch and folds in the same way, resting 25 minutes between each set. And after that third set, you'll want to flip the dough over in its container to prepare it for the coil folds. Then of course place it back into the warm environment for another 25 minutes. So now we'll be performing two sets of coil folds, again spaced out at 25 minute intervals. These coil folds will allow us to be more gentle with the dough during its later stages of bulk fermentation, while still helping us to develop the gluten structure. So just pick up the dough and let one side fold underneath itself like so, then set it back down and repeat that same process three more times around the perimeter of the dough. 
As always, make sure to wet your hands before handling the dough to prevent any sticking. Now after the next 25 minute resting period, the dough should be starting to get nice and aerated with a few small bubbles on the surface, but it shouldn't be overly bubbly and sticky. If it is, you may want to cut the bulk fermentation short and skip straight to the next step in order to avoid over fermenting your dough. But assuming it still looks good, proceed with the final set of coil folds, then place it back into your warm environment for another 25 minutes. And after that resting period, we're ready to start shaping. Start by dusting your work surface with a good amount of flour, then turn your dough out with the top side facing down. And preferably you should wet your hands before doing so, which for some reason I didn't do this time and you can see the struggle. Anyways, using a floured bench scraper, divide your dough up into two equal sized pieces, then flip them over and shape them each into a top ball, using your bench scraper to develop tension. Be sure not to overshape because that can cause the surface to tear, so you just need to form some initial tension here. Then dust the loaves again with flour and cover them with a dish towel for a 25 minute bench rest. And after that, it's time for the final shaping. For this, you'll need two bannetons, and since I'm going to form my loaves into batards, I'm using oval bannetons which I've dust with rice flour to prevent any sticking. If you want to learn how to shape a boule, you can refer back to my basic sourdough bread recipe video which will be linked below. So for the shaping, start by flipping the loaves back over onto a floured portion of your surface, making sure to keep the other side unfloured to allow it to stick to itself. Take one loaf at a time and stretch it out so it lies slightly flatter on your surface. Then grab the portion of the dough closest to you and stretch it up and over about two thirds of the way down the dough. Then grab the left and right sides of the dough and fold them over in the same way, being sure to stretch them a bit to develop some tension, but also being careful not to tear the dough. Finally, grab the top corners of the dough and fold them in toward the middle, then tuck to develop some tension, fold the dough over, then tuck again and fold again until you've reached the end of the dough. At that point, just drag the dough along your work surface to develop a bit more tension and seal off the seams, then gently transfer the loaf to your banneton with the seam side facing up. Then repeat that process with the second loaf, dust both of them with some more rice flour, and place them into food safe plastic bags or any other airtight containers for the final rise. Now if you follow my recommended timing, it'll be about 1pm at this point, so in order to get these loaves in the oven within the next few hours, we'll need to let them rise at room temperature. But we also want to bake the loaves while they're cold, for reasons that I've detailed in previous videos, so what we're going to do is allow them to rise for 1-1.5 to one and a half hours at room temperature, then for another 1.5 hours in the refrigerator. And once the loaves spring back slowly when poked, we know they're ready to bake. So here are the loaves at the beginning of proofing, and you can see that they spring back right away. Then after my one and a half hour room temperature proof, they spring back a bit slower. And finally, after the additional one and a half hour proof in the fridge, they spring back very slowly, which is exactly what we want. So once your loaves have been in the fridge for about 30 minutes, you'll also want to start preheating your oven with a Dutch oven or combo cooker inside to 500 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 260 degrees Celsius. Then after the entire hour and a half, take your first loaf out of the fridge and working as quickly as possible, toss it into the bottom half of your Dutch oven and score it. Then place the lid onto your Dutch oven and throw that whole thing back into your oven. After 20 minutes, remove the Dutch oven lid and reduce the oven temperature to 450 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 230 degrees Celsius, and bake the loaf for another 15 to 20 minutes until the desired level of browning is achieved. Then repeat that process with the second loaf, and as always, you'll want to let the loaves cool completely on a wire rack for at least 1-2 to two hours before cutting into them. But once you do, you should be left with a beautiful open crumb loaf with a nice mild flavor, which I actually prefer compared to the overly tangy loaves that you get with a lot of sourdough bread. But if you do want a more tangy loaf, you'll need to slow down the process a bit because the longer time and lower temperature proofing is what typically gives the loaves their tangy flavor. But this recipe is perfect for anyone who claims to not like sourdough bread because they don't like the tangy flavor of it. This recipe can achieve a very mild tasting loaf that you may not even know is sourdough if you hadn't made it yourself. So just one more thing before we move on. For those of you who want to take your sourdough bread baking to the next level, I'm now available for one-on-one -on -one video consultations, which you can set up through the link in the description below. I do try to answer all of your questions in the comments to the best of my ability, because I don't want you to have to pay to get the information you need. But for those of you that really want to dive deep and work directly with me to improve your loaves, this is the way to do it. So, now that you know how to make some same day sourdough bread, if you want to pick up some more tips on how to get a better oven spring, be sure to click that video in the bottom right corner of the screen. So, there you go. I'll see you all in the next one.